Right, so we're going to um, have a walkthrough of my Matt Maiden Paradox self-built boat um, and there's a few features that we're going to look at in particular um, and those features are the sheeting arrangement and reefing arrangement which can be done from inside the boat the uh, cooking arrangement the ballast tanks this boat has 70 litres of ballast uh, which is water there's another 135 kilos of lead but the pump in and pump out arrangement uh, I believe is is quite a good way of doing things. Uh, we're also going to look at um, the tiller arrangement which is also done from anywhere within the boat. Um, and finally uh, we'll just have a quick look at the electrics. So this boat just has two lines to control the sail which is a standing lug sail which uses uh, boom roller reefing. Now this vent box that you're looking at here with these two clam cleats uh, that feeds the lines outside. Now we've just got a continuous a continuous line and this left line here that controls the drum reefing on the boom and this right hand line here is the halyard. Um, now I'll be honest with you it is fairly hard work to reef so you really need to be wearing a pair of gloves. This is the other side from the vent box down below so we're now on top of the boat and you can see in there um, the electric line that goes up the mast to the masthead light and also the green earthing wire which is lightning protection. Now if we move here this is the boom furler arrangement and the key thing here is this little homemade um, fair lead. Now I discovered that that fair lead there made all the difference so that's a deviation from the plans because the fair lead has been attached using cable ties so that it always stays square on to the hoop and that has made a large difference. Now one of the most wonderful things about the Paradox is the fact that this lug sail can be roller reefed up really tightly and then dropped into these hoops along the side of the cabin so you can get it right out of your way when you're moving around in the cabin which is great. If we look up the mast here to the light at the top I have left an open slot up there for the halyard so that you can use the ULO to flick the halyard in and out and that means that at night it's very quiet because when the ULO is in its hoop and pulled back and the sail is down in its hoop they both form a barrier along the back deck so you can put things there and they don't fall off and so you can use it as a general storage area. Um, you can see down here that I've moved my pin to the ULO, there's the original hole and I had a similar height to the pin but it was vertical and a bit too far away from the transom so I moved it to where you sit today and on a bit of an angle about maybe 20 degrees and that means that the ULO is much easier to use. 
So I've got an Arrigo methylated spirit stove in here and I've put it inside a lining that I've made of galvanized tin just in case, well, I, what I've noticed is if you don't get the pot straight over the stove as soon as you lit it, a lot of heat ends up getting up, up to the top there because you're not really supposed to install these stoves with less than half a metre of height above them and I've probably only got um, maybe 400 if I'm lucky. Um, so, but with this lining in place just to protect it and I've also got a fire blanket so I can chuck it over the stove. But these are wonderful, wonderful stoves. Expensive, they're certainly not cheap but so easy to use, um, I'd never go back to anything else, forget it, kerosene, um, those propane canisters, it's all just a waste of time, this thing is brilliant for a boat. I have installed a, a pumping arrangement underneath this hatch, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. So, if I open this hatch, underneath here I've got a freshwater pump and then I've got, as it happens, I've got about uh, maybe 30 kilos of lead ballast to trim the boat just right in front of that uh, divider and then there's general storage ahead of that. And I've got the the hoses and pumps the uh, hosing and uh, valve arrangement is stored in this right hand compartment so I'll get that out and we'll have a look at it. So this is my pumping system uh, it's a wee bit complicated but it actually works quite well there's a couple of twists and hoses that's because I normally use it upside down uh, not the way that you see it now but in short there's a four wave valve system so the top the top uh, Y valve that you see there is filling either the port tank or the starboard tank the bottom two, you reverse, so currently they are set to fill the tanks, so you have one valve open for fill and the other one is closed, and that's the case for both of these Ys, one's always open and one's closed. And then to empty the tanks, you simply reverse this valving arrangement, so you just change the one that was open to closed and then the one that was closed to open you do that on both of those and the whole thing reverses and so you can pump the tanks so I fill the tanks using this long piece of hose here and I just throw that over the side and put it in a bucket of water so I fill the bucket from some external source and then I pump from that bucket into the tanks. Uh, the little electric pump, 12 volt pump, is quite slow. Uh, it does about um, uh, 7 litres a minute or, or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I know it takes about 10 minutes to fill the tanks. And, uh, and then when I come to empty it, you just throw that hose over the side, reverse these valves, Ten minutes later, your tanks are empty. This is the tiller lock. All it is is just a piece of plumbing hardware, and I just cut a slot. 
I just cut a slot out of the out of the threaded uh, piece of pipe, and then there's just a cap that goes on the end and presses against the line, and that that does a good job. So this line that goes around the boat, it goes all the way around the boat and I have to say it makes a very good washing line. So there's the tiller there going out the back and this line goes all the way around the boat with my washing on it. To the front and then and there you can see it crossing the boat and it goes all the way around. So this is my electrical system. I've just mounted a solar regulator and a little fuse box inside a transparent lunch box. And then I've just used a, I've just drilled a series of holes in that lunchbox lid for 12 volt, I've got a couple of 12 volt outlets and I've got switches for lighting, there's forward lighting in the um, so called state room up forward. I even have a light in the very front compartment just so you can actually see what you're doing in there otherwise it's just a black hole. Uh, then I have lights in the cabin area and I also have lights right down the back over the cooking station so I could cook there at night if I needed to. And um, the 12 volt outlets are very useful for charging things like my VHF radio and the cell phone. And I have in here somewhere one of these wee Garmin GPSs and that uses Bluetooth to talk to my phone so I can have um, all my navigation software or whatever I want on the phone, an Android phone. Now I made a modification to the plans, it's the only modification of any significance and we will have a look at that now. Well I wanted to have a large rigid solar panel because they are much more efficient and so rather than the curved cabin top as per the plans I've built a flat cabin top and the hatch, it's still a curved hatch, but it sits in a, uh, in a channel. You can see the channel there, there's the channel, there's the drainage holes, the drainage hole there, and I've just got um, some kind of self-sticking um, draft stop type rubber because of course if a wave breaks over um, the boat there is no way that a, uh, any kind of channel and uh, drainage hole is ever going to be able to move the water in time so a far better approach is to actually have it sealed and it will drain in its own time but these strings that hold the hatch enable it to go forwards and backwards so I've currently got it backwards so I've got this hole here that I can just stand in. So I'm going to uh, drop this hatch 
into its channel now. And it just pops in there. And now I've got these clam cleats that you can seal. And once you've done that, it is a very watertight and even airtight situation. Uh, now, I've not actually tried to sail like this. Um, I did very briefly and I overheated.